and they each derive their identities differently. Differently. And that's why when you put them together, they're a formidable force because she keeps all of the relationships together and he keeps it going. Meaning he's the provider of everything and the protector of everything. You, you see what I'm saying here? Okay, let's keep going. Can you write the CC if I the size? I'm sorry? Let me see. No, it's not giving me that. So that's right. I mean, funerals are a rite of passage, the sacraments, the sacraments of initiation. You know, that's the, the word initiation yeah. is that's the first three sacraments that, that you have to have first the death of the old self, the baptism, the, the confirming of the new identity in Christ and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and confirmation, and then the incorporation into the body through receiving the Holy Eucharist. You say that the poor presentation of men in popular culture, and you got Homer Simpson mentioned here, is not so much about presenting men as buffoons and idiots, which they do, obviously, on a regular basis on television, but you say, but about presenting them as self-centered and immature. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think instead of just saying they're bad men or they're idiotic men, I think the better way to say is that they're immature, they're, they're boys in men's bodies, that the Homer Simpsons and the, the, the cliche images of the, the, you know, the buffoon on television, what he actually is is a boy in a man's body. That's a better way to understand it than I wouldn't say he's even a distortion of, man, of manhood. He's, he's not a man. Mm -hmm. We have uh, enough cultural from just observation also from philosophy and also from revelation. We have images of what it means to be a man. It's not, you say, oh, that, what a broad thing to define. And, and uh, in a certain way, yeah, I'm not gonna give the world over universals, mm -hmm. but the, the, every culture, every healthy human culture recognizes within their place, um, within their people, what it looks like to be a man. But the universal aspects of that are to be pulled out of selfishness and narcissism into giving yourself in a community, being a part of a brotherhood, uh, using your strength sacrificially. I mean, these things we know and how they take shape are different, but. I think that's the key element there. Learning how to be, let me see if he can say, this is the essence of what, it, what I'm talking about, what real manhood is all about. within their people what it looks like to be a man, but the universal aspects of that are to be pulled out of selfishness and narcissism into giving yourself in a community, being a part of a brotherhood, uh, using your strength sacrificially. I mean, these things we know and how they take shape are different. Pull out of selfishness and narcissism. That's a childish aspect. Notice that? Children are self-centered and, and narcissistic. Adults are not. <laughs> or they should be. <laughs> right. Right? But this is exactly what he's talking about. When we talk about men who are self-absorbed and narcissistic, they are boys still in men's bodies. Their psychology has not caught up to their body. And I would argue this is the state that Adam was in when he was in the garden. He didn't know any better. No one taught him what it needed to do, what he needed to do. And so that's why what happened, what happened. And so now God is correcting this by ordering man to labor all the days of his life through sweat and toil, when you shall provide for bread. This is a way of maturing his thinking so that he's no longer this self-absorbed, narcissistic child. The world is a place of soul making. We're back to what Irenaeus said about it. And this is what we're talking about in these rituals, these ceremonies of, of traditional cultures that make boys into men. Boys have to be made into men. It doesn't just happen. 
these buffoons on TV, they're just, they've never done it. They're passive and they're, they're all very wimpy. They, they're not leaders. Um, I mean, the other extreme on television is just the, uh, the jerk, the dominating, overpowering, cliche jerk. I think that's where the, the toxic masculinity comes, comes from. from. That, that, that straw man is putting. You say Catholic men are not exempt from this crisis of mature manhood. I've been working with men and boys since my conversion to Christ as a teenager. I've troubled, I'm troubled at how little Catholic literature there is on masculine maturity and mentoring. Universal practice of male rites of passage. How does one become a mentor? Or, or is each father a mentor for his own child? Well, mentoring is not a, a necessarily a Christian word. I mean, it comes from the Odyssey. Mentor is the man that Odysseus left Telemachus in, right. in, in charge of. And you talk of. about that. Yeah. Right. So uh, when I say mentoring... And it was his son. So. Yeah. That's right. The helpful... It's a helpful uh, analogy for us, though, because when we hear the word mentoring, we think of doing something. Like if you're... Or like an apprenticeship where you're, you're learning how to act, how to... The mannerisms, you know, Blessed John Henry Newman talks about in um, the idea of a university that you have to be around someone for quite a while to learn all the nuances of things that we call character, to learn character. So every boy needs those, but they're isolated heavily. There, there's a, a, a generational isolation. You've got the men over here, and we've got the boys over here. And in the church, the big problem I see is that we uh, affirm and confirm and perpetuate this isolation. So we've got our men's group over here. We've got our young adult group over here. We've got our youth group over here. And the very fact that we have youth groups, middle school and high school, isolated from men in a co-ed environment, oftentimes the youth group co-ed environment, without mentoring from men and being in a brotherly environment, which and is- And most of those run by women? Absolutely, yeah, overwhelmingly women. There are some men that are in it, but I, I not to be controversial, but what I've found is that a lot of the boys or the young men that are running youth groups are running it because they actually don't want to grow up. So they're trying to appeal to youth as youth. You know, we always say, oh, the young can reach the young, which is just not true. I mean, yes, of course, we need, in between the older generations and the younger, we need these bridges. But ultimately, no, we're, bring, we're not bringing them into, we, we think about it as you're going from the youth group and then to the young adult group and then to the slightly older young adult group. Like, no, no, they need to be brought into the brotherhood of men as soon as possible. So the fact that we've isolated, even in the most successful men's groups and youth things in the church, we've isolated men from boys shows that we don't understand masculinity very well in, in, in the way that we do apostles. And we tend to think in the church, well, we've got this down because we've got an all-male priesthood, right? So we've, um, we understand this stuff. So we don't, I think that's part of the reluctance to talk about it. It's like, why are you talking about this men's stuff? You already get all male Episcopate right. and all this stuff. Like, you want more? Can we talk about It's more? already male dominated. Well, yeah, it's already male dominated, which is. You're insecure that's with right. what's going on in you just the want, church these days. Yeah, that's you're the a problem. patriarchal just, idiot. Right, right. you're just trying to recapture the past. You say, the book's not primarily about the distinction between man and woman, but boy and man. And it's, what exactly is given up when a boy becomes a man? That's a question you ask. Yeah, I think, obviously, within different cultures, within, that's going to look different. But we, you've brought up one that you're recognizing, which is. Uh, the ways of a boy when it comes to men they're playing video games, right? So this is something, if you're not, uh, and we were discussing before the show, when someone, what is it that makes a conversion, you know, within maybe the evangelical world or somebody that becomes a Catholic who's a convert, what makes them so zealous for their new identity? And it's the fact that there was something that they left behind. There was something that they had to put away to embrace the new identity. And the reality is boyhood is so distinct from manhood that they, they can't be lived at the same time. You can't do that. You say at best our modern society is delaying maturity for men, and at worst we're punishing it. And, and that's something, talk about that, because uh, where you know, the natural uh, rambunctiousness, as you talk about in the book, of a, of a young boy, right. in many ways is seen as a negative thing today. Right, yeah, they um, are literally medicating but, you know, the budding masculinity out of boys. Uh, a boy who is wildly passive, who does exactly what he's told, who conforms to his environment, who never causes trouble, who's allowed, is the best student in the class, right? Which is, as I'm describing that, I think men listening would go, you can't describe that then as an adult man and say he's passive, doesn't assert himself, keeps his head down, does what he's supposed to do, and doesn't cause any trouble. Moms out there listening, they're not thinking, yeah, that's the kind of man I want around. They, they don't want that but yet so we're punishing it as boys enter into this because they're i mean they're under 
They're inside in an air conditioned environment under artificial lighting with artificial scents, with artificial screens everywhere educating them. They're not experiencing the reality that's required to grow up, to become a man. So this is, this is a massive problem. And when they start to, I want to get up out of my, I want to use my, so think about what I, what I was describing, the gift my father gave me of, right. there's so many boys out there that are in trouble. I mean, right down the road from me, I live in a rural community and there's this after school program for the troubled boys. Mm -hmm. And they literally, I pass by, I go into this classroom and they are, they, they're given medicine and they're pacified on screens and they're overseen by women with clipboards watching them. And I think, man, I wish I could go to the farm because I have a little farm. I wish they could come with me. And I guarantee you, if you gave them a, a, a meaningful job to do, some work, some craft, something to be proud of with their hands instead of keep, because what they're doing is keeping them idle and pacified. Right, right, exactly. uh, so they're punishing. These boys are probably in trouble. I mean, they probably are fatherless. I've, I'm guessing that because I see them dropped off by mom, picked up by mom, overseen by a, a mom, a maternal figure, and the right. teacher. Um, if they had a man- Right, who may be doing the best they can. They but, are, right. they are, but what they, they can't give masculinity. Right. So if they had someone in their life that could give them the gift of hard right. work, it would be totally different. And what is a, a message, because there's so much in this book and we're not gonna get to it. People are gonna have to pick up the book to, to get all of it. But you say women also go through rites of passage to womanhood, but these rites are deeply rooted in their physical and psychological makeup. In other words, they're, they're naturally occurring and naturally powerful. You talk about obviously when a woman goes through and when she has a child, etc., and that those things don't naturally happen to a guy. Right, right. So obviously there are natural things that happen in a woman's body that orient her every month towards the reality of their, the, the possibility of, of being a mother, right? Within a boy, he doesn't have such an experience, which is why in a lot of um, tribal societies, things like circumcision were delayed until adolescence. And the idea was, you know, if you see what the girls have to go through, you're going to go through something too. And th those things were also oriented towards showing them that they're a father. Because birth itself is a rite of passage for a woman, not for the man. And the, the man has to be brought through the initiation by the men who said, this is what it means to be a man. And then they send them, in a sense, to their family to love. Right. You're connecting Jesus' rite of passage. Talk about the story of the child Jesus in the temple. You know, it's not so much about his childhood, but about the transition out of childhood and the mission that will eventually be associated with his man. You see that connection. Absolutely, yeah. When I was studying the right passage, and I was thinking, when it happened, when it occurred, I thought, wow, well, I want to see this in Revelation. I want to see this confirmed, because Jesus was a male, and that, that has meaning, that has a purpose in God's design. Uh, so he would have been through this, and St. Luke, very clear uh, in what we call the, the finding in the temple, the losing in the temple. He literally is saying this was the moment that Jesus in his humanity was oriented towards the mission of the father away from being a boy so are, are you recommending throwing kids overboard <laughs> overboard what depends on well, well and caps courageous that's you, right. you talk about the kipling story right okay so that's a good segue to what are the parts of a rite of passage and why is captain courageous by kipling that the passage story you know all great hero epics that involve a boy and, and even the hero's journey are in a sense they're the rites of passage I'm going to stop this right now. There's, a, there's about three more minutes left, but I do want to bring us back and talk a little bit more about this and share with you some of my own. Um, can we get the lights on, please? Okay. Thank you. Um, and, and talk a little bit about, when I heard this, I thought, this is brilliant. This is some of the stuff that I had studied in my world mythology and how it related to men and men's psychology and these rites of passage um, that I thought, this is great. This is a Catholic perspective on something that I had already studied in a, if you will, a secular environment. And what I want to talk about are, these are two of the books that I would recommend for men, other than the one that was issued here. Uh, one is called Fire in the Belly and Knights Without Armor. In Fire in the Belly, what Sam Keen talks about uh, that makes a man a man are three things. Traditional cultures have three ways in which men are turned from boys into men. And it's through um, work, war, and sex. Work 
war, and sex. Those are the three elements that transform a boy psychologically from being a boy into a man. Well, what do you mean by that? What about war? Well, this has to do with that protecting element. Boys in traditional cultures are reared to be warriors. Think about Native American tribes, okay? All the boys, all the men were warriors. They had to, to protect the tribes from other tribes. So part of the rites of passage of turning boys into men is that a boy had to learn how to hunt. Not only to feed the tribe, but to learn how to throw a spear, how to kill, how to defend oneself. So not only kill a deer, but to kill a bear that would harm you. So there's that protect element. We gotta protect from the bears and the lions and guard or nurture the tribe by killing the deers and the mammoths and stuff on the plains to feed our families and our tribes. So that if a warrior tribe comes in, you know how to pick up that spear and guard. You got it? This transforms the psychology of a boy from being selfish and narcissistic to outward giving and nurturing. Okay, you see that? How does that work today? Ah, very good. I would argue, and what I did argue in my, it's like we don't go hunting for bears anymore. We don't have that. How does a, a boy do that here? I would say part of it is overcoming his or his own sense of narcissism, of being able to think outside of himself and to care for another person. That would be the war within himself, is to, he has to overcome that. It also has to do with standing up for oneself, being able to protect oneself from outward threats, bullies on the 